So as you can see, the Henny here is indefinite integrals. Last term we had a look at all of the theory underneath this. We connected all of the, the history and the areas and calculus all together in one big theoretical ball. So now we wanna just get busy developing this skill and fluency uh, in, de in doing integration. Now, one of the things that was really clear when we were having a look at your exam papers is that you were making the error that generations of calculus students have been making, which is that when it comes to powers, you know how to differentiate, you know how to integrate, and it's super easy to confuse the two. So I'm thinking back to when I was your age and one of the things I got taught that helped me remember this, a nice little mnemonic device. When it comes to powers, and I invite you to jot this down with me, it's really, really simple to remember. Integrals increase powers. That's why we say that index is gonna go up. So if, for example, we were integrating something like x to the power of n, whether that n was one, two, three, four, or five, or even for negative numbers, as we've seen, except for negative one, what do we do there? Will we increase the index? We would write that as x to the power of n plus one, and then we divide by that new power. Don't forget, we're dealing with indefinite integrals here, so you get that constant integration flying on the end there. Let me move this over because the fact that it is not centered is bothering me. Okay, that's better. Now, you're probably anticipating what the other side of the mnemonic is, right? If integrals increase, well, conversely, derivatives decrease. So for me, when I think back to you know all of the different questions that I'm doing, and as you go further into the course, you're going to be asked to not just say, hey, here's a differential calculus part of the paper, and here's an integral calculus part of the paper. You'll be required to do these flexibly, and you'll have to go in both direction, directions, and you have to seamlessly convert between each. So when you are differentiating, if you have this x to the power of n, we learnt this law, this um, rule much earlier. We bring that index down and then we reduce the index by one. So when you have a derivative, the powers decrease. Integrals increase, derivatives decrease. So hopefully that is nice and memorable for you. Let's have a go at uh, some of the example questions in exercise 1D. We're gonna do this in two halves. We'll look at some of the simpler ones first. I'll walk you through, um, invite some questions, and then get you to have a go at the, um, the exercise. And then we will we'll break for probably mm, maybe 10 minutes in the middle or so. We'll see how we go for time. Um, to let you guys do some work independently, and then we'll return for the back half of the lesson to do some harder examples. So question 3B is the one that we're going to tackle first and hopefully this is one which uh, you'll be able to call back from last term that we can remember. So 3B is right at the top here. It says very directly find the following indefinite integrals and uh, there's part B there which we can all jot down together. The integral of x to the power of 4 take away x cubed dx. So this is about as straightforward as it gets. The only thing that needs to be worried about the fact here is that you've got two different terms being integrated. So we just take them one at a time. Remembering that integrals increase the power, we're going to go x to the power of 5, then we divide by that new one. That minus sign hangs around for the ride, and then we go x to the power of 4 divided by 4. Don't forget your constant of integration. So, that's not too complicated. Nice one, Hamza. Very helpful screenshot there. Let's have a look at the next question down where we're seeing, like I said, this applied to negative indices. So, question four says, find the indefinite integral of each function, and this one has said, leave negative indices in your answers. Often the question will be provided to you just as a fraction, but they have given us negative indices here, so when we uh, take a, an integral here, we're gonna leave the negative indices in place. So the example I want us to have a go at was for c, so let me just put that into view there. There it is, x to the power of negative eight. So to find the indefinite integral, I'm gonna go x to the power of negative eight, and I'm integrating with respect to x. What am I gonna do here? Again, integrals increase those powers, but the thing you need to be caref careful for here is eight doesn't turn into nine, it's negative eight, so it's gonna go up into negative seven. So I'm gonna get here, x to the power of negative seven, divided by that new index, which in this case was negative seven. Now at this point, um, you know, I'm sort of done. I've done the integration, but I should tidy this up. We don't tend to like having negative numbers on our denominators, so I'm just going to do a minor adjustment there and put the minus sign on top, on the numerator. So I get x to the power of negative seven 
on seven plus my constant. And I'm only leaving it in a negative index form just because they've asked us to. But if I wanted to, I could have written it as uh, negative one over seven X to the seven plus my constant in the tiny little space that I have left over. Okay, so let me pause for a moment there and I'm gonna ask you to have a look at question five. Now, five is a bit trickier in that, again, we're not dealing with just nice, easy numbers. I'm making it a little more challenging for you here by throwing fractions at you, but it's the same principle. Um, you can see here, we're going to be increasing, the power still go up by one. Uh, just be, in, be really, really careful when you're dealing with those fractions and common denominators there. So let me give you, um, 30, 60 seconds to have a go at 5D and 5E, and uh, then I will show you my answers. So you're on the clock, have a go. Now, I'm going to follow something that I've been doing in the past few lessons with you in that I'm gonna put an excessive amount of working here, mainly because it really helps my brain to be able to check if I'm doing this right um, and avoids common errors. So when I'm writing my integral here, oh, actually, I'm gonna go straight to um, actually having integrated, I'm going to put this extra piece of working here plus one up the top there to really indicate to myself, there's the N plus one. You might be able to guess what the common error here is. People see two over three, they look at the two and they say, well, I'm just gonna add one to that and it becomes three over three, but you're not increasing the index by one there, you're only increasing it by a third. So once I've got that, I'm gonna divide by this new power, which is two thirds plus one. I've got my constant now. And what that allows me to do is to separate in my brain the two processes happening at the same time. Um, I'm doing the integration, which is the plus one and divide by the new index. And now separately, I'm gonna deal with the fractions. Um, two thirds plus one, that's two thirds plus three thirds. So that's gonna give me x to the power of five on three, and five on three is the same thing that appears on the denominator. Now I'm gonna sneak this down a little bit to give me some extra space to do the tidying up here. Um, when I look at this division by five thirds, it's messy, right? Just like we don't like to have negative numbers on our denominators, we don't tend to like fractions on our denominators either if we can avoid it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that fraction, the whole thing, x to the 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds. I'm gonna put some brackets there just to make it very, very clear. I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by three. So that gives me three, whoopsie daisy, three x to the 5 thirds on the top, and it's gonna give me a five on the denominator because the threes cancel. Uh, like I said, it's actually quite fine. And in fact, if I were in a hurry and I was in an exam, because I'm fairly comfortable with this, I would probably go straight to this line of working if I were trying to do this in the most efficient way possible. I just know my brain and fractions, especially when I'm under time pressure, uh, are very liable to make mistakes here. And it's a little bit, I mean, it's the same thing as, you know, rubbing your tummy and patting your head. It's just your brain gets confused between the two things it's trying to do. And I will often forget to do one of them entirely. And then you'll wonder, how did I make that silly mistake? Right, let's have a go with this one. Again, I'm gonna put that extra line of working in. So I've got x to the power of negative a half and I'm gonna add one to that. And then I divide that by whatever that result will be. Add my constant integration. My integration is done now, but I'm going to tidy up all of these fractions here. A half, uh, sorry, negative a half plus one. Can you all tell me what that is in the comments? You should be able to type that in. It's not too complicated. I'll even take it as a decimal if you like. Okay, fantastic seeing the first few ones come through. Wonderful, Hamza, have you already gone to the next step? That's great. So yes, I'm gonna get a negative half plus one. So that's just a half. And then I'm dividing by that same thing plus a half. But of course, division by a fraction is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal. So that's why you get two x to the half plus c. Now, um, the question here again is said, leave fractional indices in your answers, but if we didn't, what does x to the power of a half actually indicate? That, uh, that's gonna be a square root, isn't it? So you could also write this as two square root of x plus c. Oops, today's I didn't mean to quote that. All right, now the last one we're gonna have a go at together just before I set you loose to do a few more of those other questions is 6f. Now it says, and it gives, it's very specific here. By expanding brackets where necessary, find the following indefinite integrals. And here's f in case you don't have uh, the questions open up there in front of you. 
So 6F, let's move this guy out of the way for a moment so that I can use this. I always forget how much working space I actually need. So 6F is asking us to integrate 2X plus 1 all squared with respect to x. Now there is another way to do this which we'll come to in the second half of this lesson but we're not going to do that quite yet. Um, 2x plus 1 all squared. Let's do the expansion here carefully. First term, second term and then we'll double the product. So 2x all squared. That looks to me like it's going to be oopsie daisy I need my integral sign. That looks like it's going to be 4x squared. Uh, my second term being squared there, 1 squared is 1, and then you're also going to get double of the product. So 1 times 2x gives you 2x, double it gives you 4x. Now I haven't done any integration yet, I've just messed with that thing being integrated, the, um, the integrand, if you want to use the fancy term there, that's the name of, uh, let's do it this way, there we go, that thing in there is the integrand. So by making that expanded, we can now go through term by term and do this just like the other questions we were doing. This time, now that I think we've got the hang of it, I'm going to do it a little more quickly. So I'm going to get that 4x cubed on 3, the uh, integral increase the index, plus x, plus, now this guy here will become 4x squared on 2, but hopefully you're seeing there, well that 2 and that 4 are going to cancel, leaving me with 2x squared plus my constant. 